So why do we call it matter if it's invisible? You know, I usually think of matter as this chair or your body or stars, galaxies or furniture or whatever. The reason it's called matter is it bends space-time in the same way as regular matter. So it's the majority of the gravity in a galaxy. You can think that it's the scaffolding of a galaxy. So our galaxy is the Milky Way galaxy, which has 100 billion stars, 100 billion stars. And now they say possibly 30 billion habitable planets. But they're held together by gravity. If there's no gravity, the sun wouldn't, you know, the earth wouldn't go around the sun and, you know, you wouldn't have um, galaxies revolving. You wouldn't have anything. Your body will fall apart, right? But this dark matter behaves like regular matter, but it's invisible. What is it? Nobody knows. I mean, scientists are looking for some particle. They call it a WIMP. Uh, which is, stands for weakly interactive massive particle, but they have no idea what it is. So now we've got 95% of the universe which is missing. It's invisible. That leaves about 5% of the universe which is atomic. Of that, 99.99999% is invisible interstellar dust, which means this dust has not yet coalesced to form stars. And the theory is that all the stars have already been formed. No new stars are being born right now. And so 99% and more is this invisible stellar atomic dust. Most of it is hydrogen and helium that came from the Big Bang. So what's left? 0.01% of a visible universe which is atomic. That visible universe is the Milky Way galaxy with 100 billion stars, next door Andromeda, next door Virgo, on and on, hundreds of thousands, as Carl Sagan would say, billions and billions and billions and billions <laughs> of these star systems, and now possibly trillions of planets, that's 0.01% of the universe. But if you look at that 0.01%, you know, it's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, which is manufactured, incidentally, in stars. And it's also what makes up your body. 